Okay. I've got these all nice and locked, tied in. I didn't have a reamer that uh, would do the job of making them a press fit. I have put two layers of clear packaging tape on this. And I'm getting it set into position. It's a nice fit. Okay, let's make sure that uh, we're not contacting it yet. Okay, bring it all the way down. Lock this. Okay, we got the Z locked now. I'll back that out just a wee bit more. I don't want to bite off too much. I'm holding this with my bare hands. We're not going to be using lead screws to adjust this. Or, or the uh, rotary table. The only lead screw that we will be using was, is going to be on the y-axis as we'll be bringing the part in closer. Keep a nice firm grip. Back up. Move in. So I got this set up so when I have it in where I'm supposed to stop, it will be at zero on, on the DRO. Where's my brush? Hold up. Let me do my brush. Yeah, yeah. Always nice to clean this out. Now I'm going to bring it in just a little more. Got a glare on these things. On my my uh, DROs are LCD. Yeah, a little hard to read. I got the uh, what is that? Eye gauging. Should be called eye hard to see under certain lighting conditions. And the brush again. I make sure you get them cleaned on the back side of the pins. Because those are your stops. Bring it up just a little more. Done it with a reamer, but I did drill the holes by plunging them with an end mill, which brings them in nice and close. Now 
Here's one done. Okay, let's uh, take the table back away again and start the second hole. That wonderful sound you hear is my wife doing her imitation of a goose. Actually, she is blowing her snoot. <laughs> but I try to pretty that up for you. I'm supposed to be going to buy a table saw today. And the uh, Gentleman can inform me that he will be out until January 2nd, which is Saturday. Claims he's got three buyers. The price he's got is good, I can't complain, as long as the saw is working and all is in good condition. It's half price. And I informed him that he says he's got three other buyers. I told him I'll if I come down, I'm not going to haggle the price. If it's, if it's what he says it is, I will take it as is on his word. All I'm going to do is push the start button and make sure it fires up. That and make sure the blade doesn't wobble or shoot through the top or out the bottom or come off on the side. That's a, it's a cobalt saw. Yeah, and I will only be a temporary holder of it probably. <clears throat> Most of us are temporary holders of tools because in inevitably they all go to estate sales and we don't have them no more. And there's nothing wrong with that as long as somebody still gets to use them. I got a smoking deal on a radial arm saw. Craftsman 10 inch, like my father had, and I, I ran for many years. It needs a table redone on it. It had a uh, particle board table, and over the years, Humidity is 
cause it to morph into something unrecognizable. However, I can drill holes in plywood and I can remake it. And because I'll be using plywood and because I'll oil my plywood, it'll hold up longer than the original. Just a short video today. Maybe I'll shoot the uh, second part where I make the uprights, but I'm not sure right now. I need to go to the hardware store and get some hardware. Always do the last pass flow. and pull off the part with the glorious result. What winds up happening is something like this, one on each corner. And I thought it would be nice if I took the points off the ends because they're going to be swinging back and forth. I will see you at the bench. Well, we're back here at the bench, and what that radiusing was for was so when I put these on all four corners, I got nothing sharp poking out. These things are going to swing to and fro when this thing is in operation. So, I'm rounding off some edges, making it nice. Though, I don't suggest trying to grab it while it's running. Still, it, uh, it, it's aesthetically pleasing. This piece is on four pieces of five eighths, about a quarter to half inch above this bar, and it moves with this one like that. This is just a single plane cradle for my dynamic balancer. The ends of this, both of these, out here will uh, be mounted stationary and solid on a piece of uh, plat stock, not plat stock, but the angle iron and go welded, welded to a piece of four inch channel iron so it's nice solid and heavy and has a little mass to it so it's not going to shake while this thing operates. The other end is going to pivot this way to follow the movement of this. And uh, the big challenge now is making the bearing saddle to hold a bearing on each end. So rather than try to uh, bore half a hole, I've decided to bore the hole and then split the, split the part and then individually machine each one. And each one is held in the position with a U-bolt. And I'll probably put in a couple of uh, machine screws through the bottom. But these are the pieces that will be made next week. And that's, uh, that's all the com complicated stuff. Uh, everything else is fairly easy and straightforward. And most of the rest of it is steel. Uh, I'm going to order the timing gears and timing belt to power the main shaft and uh, give, give myself three different ratios 1 to 1, 2 to 1, and 3 to 1, which will give me 2000 RPM, 3000 RPM, and 6000 RPM. And uh, 
because this is uncharted territory, and I'm not sure exactly where I want to go. I know I know I do want to spend at least five thousand RPM, and I want to see what this thing is like at, at uh, speed and what it's like vibrating. And uh, above all, it's got to be safe. There, it's inherently unsafe, but that's beside the point. It's got to be safe as possible.